Hello YouTube, my name's Sean Connors and welcome back to the Outsiders channel. It's my absolute privilege and pleasure to be back with you here. Happy New Year, it's a couple of weeks into the New Year, it's now time to start rolling out some more videos. Um, I've just come back out into the shed. Uh, this is uh, this particular day. I've video when I'm releasing this video, this video will be a couple of days, a few days old to be honest. Um, but I've been doing a few videos and this is the first of them for the new year. Now, often people ask uh, the DM, you know, how, how, you know, ask an experienced DM, how, how long does it take you to learn skills? Um, how, how quickly can I become a DM? You know, the reality of all these things I'm going to explain really is it, it, that's the classic piece of string question, isn't it? It's, it? Everybody's different. They're all going to take different lengths of time. However, there's one thing that's pretty clear to me. It's very, very fundamentally important this, and it's something I'm doing at the moment. I'm putting together at the moment, um, a book, a DM's guide. Sorry, apologies. It's, uh, I'm not 100% well, as you can probably tell. Um, I'm putting together a, a book, a guide for Dungeon Masters. Um, haven't quite settled on the title yet. Got a few ideas running, but I'll come back to you in due course with that. Part of that in that book is about how to encourage DMs to understand more about themselves, how they can check their progress and things like that. And one area of the book that I've been working on is about um, skills. You know, how, how are skills taught? How do you learn skills? And what are the steps necessary to learn any skill? And in DMing, the truth of the matter is that every single skill can be taught. No matter what we think as DMs, they can all be taught, to be honest. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to be of the same level. It doesn't mean that everybody's going to be the same mastery. It doesn't mean that everybody's going to want to learn that skill. Because ultimately, the prize of DMing is having a group of players around your table, thoroughly enjoying your game, and you, their presence and their performances within your game. And it's a mutual, beautiful cycle. And when you have that, everything is great. But how do you get there? What are the steps necessary? Well, the first thing to do is not what I did. And that is, you should watch. And you should watch and possibly partake, yeah? Participate as a player. But particularly watch. Get the blessing of a GM that you like, that you trust, that you think is good. Um, ask questions to other people first about good DMs in your area. Find someone. If there's no one in your area, go online. Find blogs that interest you. Basically, just do everything in your power. YouTube, great medium to find people out there interested in the subject, like myself and other people out there. Find their channels. Don't just settle on something you watch online. Really, really f cast your net as far as wide as you can. Get as much information as you can before you settle on a DM or, um, or a couple of DMs who you really think are oh, that's it that's what you want to emulate because ultimately that's that's got to be the goal and the reason I say those things is because if you're watching online you can't always see the other elements that many great GMs bring to the table you know online is 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 okay but it's limited because you can't see the GM taking in the body language of the players the players taking in the GM's body language all the various mannerisms and various other techniques and tools that go into it you need to cast your neck to see it all equally uh, there is no harm in looking at other plethora on the edge of role playing, you know, LARPing and various other things. So, you know, really, ex really experience it. Get a really good fleshing for it. I didn't. I jumped straight in, and that was a mistake, um, but a good one. You know, I learn a lot by doing that. By jumping straight in is good, but it's not the best way. The best way, of course, is to watch. That's that's inevitable. The next thing, of course, that you've got to do at some point after taking in as much information as you can, you've got to do. You've actually got to throw yourself in the deep end. You've got if you want to DM you've got to throw yourself in. Now, you'll have already had the benefit of all that observation. You'll have been able to make lots of notes about it, ask questions, because that's one of the key things when you're watching, is to ask as many questions as you can. Because then when you come to do it yourself, of course, you're in a better place to have a go, because you understand at least the fundamentals of it. And you can find, over time, who you are as a GM, what your skills are, your, your mindset, what you bring to it, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and all those things. And then what you have is you will have found your voice. Now, you know, there's an old saying, isn't there, in, in skills. There are multiple skills for DMing. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna try to begin to put them on the page here because there are loads. But a lot of them can be broken down into similar areas. But the bottom line is you've got to find what style is yours. And that takes time. And there's an old thing, isn't there, where they say, you know, you need ten thousand hours to become a master or something. Well I, I think that's that's actually only partially true. OK, yes, you need lots of time at the table. That's the reality to find your style. And um, lots of time at the table means, you know, there's going to be setbacks. Yeah, there's going to be quite a few setbacks. And that's good. You know, that's actually good. Embrace those setbacks. Embrace those mistakes, because that's where you learn your most from them, where things have gone wrong. 
as long as you don't beat yourself up about it, as long as you have that, that willpower, that determination, that thick skin that all great GMs have to have to bounce back from um, a bad session, from a bad mistake you've made, then inevitably you're going to master this game. But there is still one crucial step necessary before you can claim you're a master. And I'm going to explain what that is. And it's only come to me, ironically enough, in the last few years. I've skirted around the edge of it and never really said. And really what it is is simply this. You have to teach. That's the ultimate goal of a master is to teach. Because if you have actually really truly mastered something, you will have broken around, you would have taken the subject, you would have taken what you've seen, what you've observed, and you would have run with that and you'll constantly keep magpieing whatever great ideas come to you. And you will keep building on your own knowledge till there comes a point where, it, to most people observing you, it's effortless. We know it isn't, but that's how it will be observed. It will be flawless. Your performances will feel flawless. Your seams where you cut and paste things into your stories or your ad-libs or the way that you bend and roll with things, players will not be able to spot those. In, genuine, in all serious and genuineness, they won't be able to spot those. That means you're on the verge of being a master. The next step, of course, is to teach. Now... YouTube videos are a medium for teaching, of course. A blog is a medium of teaching. But the real truth of it is, you've got to find other players wanting to become DMs and teach them. Teach them everything that you have, that you learn. And explain to them about how far out you've gone with the envelope, where you've taken the hobby into those new directions. And encourage them to get that mastery, to push that envelope, because it's unlimited out there. It's unlimited where this could go. And that was the great thing that these great creators of this wonderful hobby gave us, was the tools necessary to actually push the envelope. Gary Gygax said, you don't need the rules. But what he was really saying, I believe in that, is that, of course, a good DM could run with no nothing, quite frankly, because that's what they can do. But in essence, what he really wanted them to do was to understand, understand that the rules are only, the, if you like, the guidelines. And it's up to you to push, bend, and push out your skills as far as you could to develop it, to become a master. And that's the ultimate goal of every great GM. Watch, do, and teach. And when you're at that point that you're teaching others and they're going off and forming groups of their own, or people are coming to you asking you questions, or you've set a YouTube channel up, or done things where you've got lots of people who want to ask you questions, I wouldn't necessarily say that makes you a master, but what it definitely does do is you are trying to teach others what you know. And that is surely the goal. That is the goal of any GM worth their salt. You have to teach, take people under your wing, encourage them to go off and form their own groups. And when you do that, you've expanded the hobby, you've expanded your own horizons, because think about what you'll actually learn from that other person that goes off and tries to run groups of their own. Just think about the learning that comes through trying to teach people, because it's absolutely immeasurable. And there was a great thing I remember seeing uh, that I think is absolutely apt, is Picasso said, learn the rules like a pro, so that you can break them like an artist. And that's what all great DMs should be trying to become. Their own artists, their own impressionists, their own, own painters, your own style. And ultimately, that is what is going to make you exceptional. Anyway, I've been Sean Connors. This has been the Outsiders channel. Thanks for watching and thanks for keep watching. Happy gaming to you all. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.